You're witnessing Jesus Christ on the scene as people are being healed, people are being blessed, people are being saved and set free. Viewers around the world, you too can be a partaker of what you're witnessing right here at the prayer line section of the Synagogue Church of All Nation. All you need to do is to key in by faith and receive from God's throne of grace. Jesus, thank you, King of. Imalwe, God is with us. My name is Omoye Mese Omorodion. The man standing beside me is my husband. Uh, I was here last week. Uh, privilege to be on the prayer line. I have a asthma for the past 10 years. So the thing have been affecting me in many areas. Uh, uh, since 10 years, I have a asthma. I went to doctor. I didn't know it was asthma. I went to doctor because I was sick, cough, weak, so I went to doctor. The doctor told me after a series of tests, they told me it's an asthma. So they gave me healer to be using since this is the healer they gave to me. So if I, I can't really walk like that, I can't take a heel, maybe step. I can't stay in a guiding, maybe when they lock the place or smoke, if someone is smoke or heat, I can't really do those things. I can't sleep at night. I always cough, doing different things. I can't sleep. My husband always knocked me into sleep well because I always breathe. So on Sunday, I was privileged to be in the prayer line when a, a pastor, Mrs. Every, came to the prayer line. She came to me and touched me. When she touched me, it's like something came in me, something hurt. Just I just feel released it's instantly. So since then, I've not been using this ELA. So the cough, I have not been cough. I can breathe very well, and I can sleep well now. Shall we put our hands together for Jesus? Put those hands together louder for Jesus. You heard it from her. She said for the first time in 10 years, she was able to breathe freely after receiving that touch from heaven through the woman of God, Pastor Evelyn T.B. Joshua. So we thank God Almighty for what he has done. Once again, you mentioned earlier that you could not breathe. For the benefit of those who are listening to you, can you demonstrate to us now, you said you could not breathe before, and you take a deep breath so that we can see you. I can't breathe very well. Let us put our hands together for Jesus. So what God Almighty has done for you, what would be your word of advice to those listening to you now? I just want to tell everybody that uh, in anything that you are passing through, you have to seek God first. God's, God is the answer of everything. When you see him, he will see you through. I believe everyone here that come here today will not go the same way you come. Your life will be changed in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for the wonderful word of advice. Let us put our hands together for Jesus. Let us listen to the man beside you. It's your name, the person beside you, and your testimony. Emmanuel. Indeed, God is with us. Uh, this, the, the woman beside me, my lovely wife, my name is Sunday Amorodion, and we reside in the UK. So the woman he has said all oh, what really happened. Basically, this incident really affects my family most, especially me as a man. Coming from work, see your wife, you really didn't want to see her. You feel uncomfortable. But I don't really reveal to her that I feel more than you. But 
Actually, we was privileged to be in synagogue and as in synagogue last week, and then we were placed in the prayer line, which, uh, with the goal of redemption and the goal of our mother-in-law, locate my wife and touch her. You can see in, in the television how it was. So everything was dismissed. So, in short, I was more grateful. In short, I received my healing also, but my wife was not really matter to me. My wife was really matter. Once my wife is delivered, we are all healed and delivered in Jesus' name. We bless God for his mercy. We thank the God of Prophet Joshua and our mother Elo. Thank you, Jesus. Let us put our hands together for Jesus. So we know you are joyful this morning concerning what God Almighty has done for you and your family. We just wanted to take it easy. We have listened to your wife. We want to also hear you. How has this problem affected you as a man? Just take it easy before you go into your own testimony. Basically, you can see, uh, I used to, my wife is sleeping. I used to help her, turn her, because she breathes much. And not only that, she's not feeling comfortable. I used to leave the room, go to another room. I want her to be comfortable because of this. And actually, me, myself, I received my healing too. Uh, I was having waist pain and some other, but everything disappeared. So I bless the name of the Lord. Indeed, there is God. Let us put our hands together for Jesus. So we know that you received your own healing. You were having waist pain. As a man, how has this problem affected you? Yes, it really affects me most because I cannot, if I want to carry something, I find it difficult. If, like say, I, if I drive too much, I sit on the car because my job is, is just like driving because I travel up all of on. So when I sit the car for one hour, getting, getting off of the car, you know, you, yesterday, I used force to get myself up of the car. So sometimes I come, I come my regulator said, let me be sitting for 30 minutes, one hour, I will make exercise before I get this car. So it really affected me much. So what happened after the evangelist touched you? Tell us, how have you been feeling since last week Sunday? Yeah, after uh, he touched me, he really, now I feel free. It released me more. You know, I can do something which I cannot do. I can even sit, like, I can sit like three hours without getting up. Before, I can't do that. Let us put our hands together for Jesus. <laughs> yes, for the benefit of those listening to you now, can you take the mic and demonstrate to us the things that you can do now, which you could not do before when you had this problem? See, I can't, look, I can do I can do light. I can just do. I can't do this before. But if I want to do sport, I can just do. But I don't want to do it here. Like, I can do like this before. I cannot do this. Like. Wow! Well, let us put our hands together for Jesus. Amen. That is a man doing what he could not do before. We thank God Almighty for what He has done for you. Millions of things are not enough. But for all these things that God Almighty has done for you and your family, what is your word of advice? Uh, basically, uh, my advice to people is that in any situation, seek God. Our Father in the Lord said, in any situation, God speak. So, I believe this is the time God speak to our situation. So, in, in the war, people in the war, anything that you are passing through, you should compare, is not a new thing. You say God of yesterday, today, and forever, see you, and he will see you free in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Escuchamos el maravilloso testimonio de este matrimonio. Ella vino a la sinagoga iglesia de todas las naciones con un problema de asma por los últimos 10 años. Fue a diferentes doctores, hospitales en búsqueda de una solución, pero ninguno podía ayudarle con este problema. Ya no podía dormir bien debido a este problema hasta que vino aquí a la arena de la libertad 
como vemos en pantalla, la pastora Belín yo lloró por ella y recibió su sanidad instantánea y nos comenta que luego de 10 largos años ha podido dormir bien sin la ayuda de ningún medicamento y ahora también su esposo está testificando de que él tenía un dolor de cintura muy severo, pero luego de la oración con la pastora Belín Joshua, ahora puede moverse bien, no necesita tomar medicamentos para el dolor y está completamente sano para la gloria de Dios. Accompagnée de son mari, remercie Dieu pour la guérison qu'elle a reçue. Elle dit qu'elle a souffert d'asthme pendant dix ans. Elle dit que ce problème lui a causé de l'insomnie. Elle n'arrivait pas à bien respirer. Venue ici à la seconde, la pasteur Yves Joshua a prié pour elle. Et elle a reçu sa guérison. Maintenant, elle respire bien sans difficulté. Elle dort bien depuis sa guérison. Son mari témoigne de la guérison de sa femme. Et il est heureux de ce fait et remercie Dieu pour sa guérison. Son mari dit qu'il a également été touché par la main de guérison de Dieu car il avait des douleurs au niveau de sa taille qui l'empêchaient de bien mener sa vie et son travail. Maintenant, depuis sa guérison, il ne ressent plus de douleurs et il peut s'abaisser et faire tout ce qu'il ne pouvait pas faire auparavant. Il conseille à tout le monde d'avoir foi en Dieu. Peu de Dieu reste connecté. Jesus. Fine. Your head. Fine the name of Jesus. Speak out. Who are you? Have you done to her? I scattered everything. Destroy your daughter? She will keep on crying every day. Have you destroyed in her life? Everything. Her business? Zero. It's my wife. She's your wife? Yes. Christ about what the spirit is saying. She has a spirit of anger. I start business. That business crumble. I have sickness now. I'm sick every day. It's me. I'm the one in charge of him. Ask him now. Anything I ask him to do, uh, do it. If he did not do it, there is problem. She said anything she asks you to do, you must do it, or else there'll be problem in the house. Yes, because I want to make peace for him. Thank you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Fire the name of Jesus. All over your body. Fire the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Fire. Thank you, Jesus. Stagnation que ah, the name of Jesus. All over your body. Fire. Fire in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Ah, in the name of Jesus. Ah, in the name of Jesus. What name you call yourself? Ah, ah, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are free. Rise up. Libéré au nom de Jésus Christ. You are free, madam. Who is this to you? Hmm? Who is this man to you? <laughs> Who is this to you? My husband. Thank you, Lord. Your wife is free. That's great. That cause it is ours. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. I am free. Thank you. My family is free. My children is free. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you to deliver my wife. Thank you. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. The couple are in our midst to share with us their testimony. Let's listen to them. Ma'am, you're welcome. Please tell us your name. Introduce the person standing next to you. Tell us where you're from and share with us your testimony. Good morning, church. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. My name is Mrs. Junwan Norum. The man beside me is my lovely husband. I want to thank God for his goodness and mercy for the way God delivered me and my family last Sunday. I came from a family that served idol. My grandfather was worshipping idol until he died. Then my dad took over. My dad continued worshipping the idol until he died. There is nobody in the house that can sacrifice blood anymore. There is nobody in the house that can worship the idol anymore. And there is one river close to 
our house in the village that my dad normally go there to sacrifice things for them. So it all started in the family. There is no peace among me and my senior ones and my younger ones. The idols started scattering things to the extent that it lead us to poverty. So, in my own case, I started drinking at the, when I was in J3. That was more than 20 years ago. You mean in your third year of your junior secondary school, JSS3? Yes, yes. That was when you started drinking alcohol. Alcohol, yes. So, when I go to bed, I'll be, I'll find myself inside that same river where my dad was doing sacrifice. I will be seeing some spirits moving around. They'll be talking to me, but I will not understand what they are saying. So after that, the spirit also give me spirit of anger. Anytime I sleep, wake up, there will be serious anger in me of which I don't want to see anybody. I don't want to talk to anybody. Inside the dream, they do bring food, different type of food. They do feed me with food. The spirit really affected my academic. I could not be able to finish school. It caused hatred, setback. But later, I got married to my husband. Thinking that the case has settled, I didn't know that it was then that that is the one that is very severe come up. When we got married, after three months, the spirit came up with disobedience, with anger. The, 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 the way I drink increased more. Without taking alcohol, I can never be happy. Even Sometimes it leads me to play gambling. I have spent more than 10 million for gambling. Sometimes my husband will be complaining. I'll be shouting for him. Shouting for the children. Before we found peace, except I took that alcohol. Even I'll be talking to a customer in the shop. The thing will be pushing me around. Next one, I'll say, ah, calm down first. I'll go shoot. I'll just run to the backyard where they are selling alcohol. I'll take one. I'll buy the small sachet. I'll take one. I'll put the other one in my pocket. So, so that I'll be high. I'll be happy to talk to the customer. If I did not take it, the way I will speak to the customer, ah, the customer will be wondering, what is all this? Okay, let me go to another place and buy. I'll tell the customer, you are free to go. But when I took it, I will stand firm to talk to a customer. I will even play with you. The customer will buy and go. So it really affected my life. It caused sickness in the life of my husband. Every minute, every second, my husband will be complaining. If he is not paying him, here we pay him. To the extent that the demon pushed me to leave my marriage, I will tell my husband that I'm done with this marriage. I will go and pack my things. My husband will be begging me. I will say, no, let me go. Before we get to this place, I told my husband that one day you will come back home. You will not see me in the house again. He said, why? I said, because I want to take my children because they are four in number. I want to carry them. He said, no, but that is not the right way. So after everything, we spent a lot. There is one sickness that is affecting him. We took him to everywhere. There is no solution. I told him, okay, let's go to synagogue church of all nation. I believe that God will see us through when we get there. So when we get to church, I was thinking it was my husband that would manifest. So when... I was battling with my mind. I said, this one is just one hand. 
He go this grand. One hand, he do this grand. We don't free. I didn't know it was me. So when one of the evangelists was coming close to our, our, where we sat last Sunday. So my heart was breathing fast. I said, ah, which kind of problem with this one? This one, my heart, they breathe fast. I can't die for a year. I don't understand though. So I keep on battling with my heart. I started shivering when the man of God was really coming close. You mean the evangelist? The evangelist was really coming close. So I was thinking he will pass like this because my husband was sitting by the left side before me. I was thinking he will come like this. So suddenly, I saw him coming by the right hand side. When he was coming, he has touched one woman that is beside me. So my, that spirit was telling me, leave this premises. Ah, what are you still doing here? So I was feeling like I want to we. The spirit was telling me, leave here, leave here. Immediately, I want to cross my leg like this to dodge him. He lay hand on me. I was not with myself anymore. So when I found myself was on the floor here, when they was asking me, who is this man beside me? So I, I was so surprised. I said, in my mind, I said, ah, me, for this girl, not even my husband. So that was how God delivered me and my children and my family and my husband. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. Wow, we thank God Almighty for this wonderful and amazing deliverance that he has wrought in your life. Tell us the changes you've noticed in your life after your deliverance. Hmm. These changes, the miracle of God, be go. I'm no longer seeing myself swimming. They are no longer feeding me. You mean you no longer see yourself swim and eat in the dream? Yes. I'm always happy because before then, if I want to go to bed, I would be scared because I'm seeing a lot of things. But now I can sleep like a baby. Even when I wake up, I'll be very happy because then my husband cannot tell me to do something. I will not do it. Even when he tapped me on the wake up, wake up, the children will go to school. I will say, ah, why are you disturbing me now? Go and get them dressed. Let them go to school. They can do it by themselves. But now, I will be the one that will wake up by myself. I will call the children, talk to them, pamper them, play with them in the phone. And this was something that has never happened before your deliverance. It has never happened in my life. I can never ever pet my children. But, but now, now, even my son was asking me, mommy, yesterday that I called him. He said, mommy, this one you are talking like this. Where are you? I said, I'm in the front of Synagogue Church of All Nation. He said, mommy, did you manifest? <laughs> so I was asking him, my son, I cannot lie to you. Your mom manifested instead of your dad. He said, no, mom, I know you will be the one that will manifest. Because the way you, I said, how? He said, the way you talk to us, the way you beat us, the way just that you can only, anything we ask you can buy, but that hearing is not there. And mommy, congratulations to you. So I really, really appreciate God for his deliverance towards my life. That's what I have together for Jesus Christ. How about the relationship with your husband now? In fact, I cannot do without him. Because before, my husband cannot touch me like this. Even if we are walking on the road, I will be at the front. My husband will be at the back. But now, ah, no now. I cannot move from here to there without him. Even if he wants to go, he will say, on your yard, let us go. I say, okay, sir. Before, I cannot tell him sorry. I will be the one that offend him all. I cannot say sorry. Who does that? Me? Sorry for what? I will be claiming right, but now, hey, honey, I'm sorry. You. He will be looking at me. Is this you? I say, not me. This is real me. Well, that's what I have to get for Jesus Christ. 
<laughs> you also mentioned that you had the problem of addiction to alcohol. Tell us, how long have you had this problem? And after your deliverance, what change have you noticed with regards to that? After the deliverance, okay, it has been since I, when I was in GS3, secondary school GS3. So that was when I started taking alcohol because my father do buy alcohol. They are using to please the, um, their girls then. So if my dad dropped that alcohol on the table, before he knew it, because we have for more than 20 years now. You mean you were addicted to taking alcohol for over 20 over years? Over 20 years. And after your deliverance, what change have you noticed with respect to that? Okay. After my deliverance, we went to a place where we get to eat, when we went to eat. So the lady that is, one lady behind there is selling alcohol. So immediately I looked at it. I said, God forbid, what is this? It's not God forbid, I reject it. So after eating, I try to check if that spirit is still there. It's no longer there. That emotion is not there. So you mean you're no longer addicted to drinking alcohol? At all. At all. Well, let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. How about the urge to gamble? You mentioned that you were always gambling and you lost over 10 million naira in the process of gambling. Tell us, how is that urge to gambling? Do you still feel that urge to gamble? No, there is no urge there anymore. Well, let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. Indeed, when Jesus enters our lives, he puts an end to our past and gives birth to a new future. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ once more. So with this amazing thing God Almighty has done for you, what word of encouragement do you have for people out there? Especially spouses that have loved ones that are going through this problem, God Almighty delivered you from. Children of God, my advice to everyone who is passing through the predicament I passed through, believe in God. There is no situation you bring to God that God can never deliver you out of it. Lord will deliver you out of it and you will be victorious in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. Let's listen to your husband. So you're welcome. Please tell us your name and tell us briefly about what God Almighty has done in your wife's life, in your life and in your family as a whole. Our name is, is Stephen Norum. I, the woman beside me is my wife. I thank Almighty God. Uh, since I married my wife, <laughs> not the small problem, big problem every day. Even if where I meet my wife, we quarry, where the quarry start in the night, when I sleep, I will meet, Byton will come and meet me. So, where the bite will meet me, first time, second time, third time, you know, where the problem come, I will take my shirt, wear my shirt, if it's self, sometimes I will not bait. And the way that I see the bite on, the business will come down. No business that very day. Everything will be closed. I'll say, ah, where did they happen? If you listen at this podio, or at this woman, I'll be the bite on. Sometimes I will tell him face to face, tell her face to face, I say, madam, on the bill, I said, now you be bite on. Where they worry me? He said, no, you not be bite on. I said, I lie, yo. So, the team make me. I know they like quarry with her. When he bring the quarry, the argument, I will run for the house. The family, the children, he no care for the children at all. But to buy things, he will buy for them. But caring, he no care. That mother in love, he no give them. Me, self, I cannot touch her. When I go close to her, he will say, go there, leave me. Sometimes, the quarry, he will say, he will carry load and go. And I beg her. I say, sorry now, madam, show what happened. 
I'll begin to give her many, many names, give her sweet name. I'll call her honey, I'll call her baby, I'll call her mommy. Many names I will call her. But the heart is not see calm down. Unless she take alcohol. Sometimes I buy alcohol for my bar. I get a gold label, black label. So she will take the alcohol. When the drink finish, she will leave the packet like that. So when I have, if I have visitors, when I go touch the packet, the only packet I will see, no need but the empty box. I will say, ah, what is this? So I will pretend the visitors don't know what is happening for the house. Because where the problem comes, are they cover. Many people no outside no come. You only between with you. So the man is speaking in a pidgin, in Nigerian language, so we'll be translating for the benefit of the viewers. The man introduced himself, he mentioned his name. He started by saying that anytime he has a misunderstanding with his wife, he would sleep and see a python come to attack him in the dream. And this happened about three times, and that made him scared to argue or quarrel with his wife. Anytime his wife gets furious and is quarreling with him, he would find a way to run away just to avoid quarreling with her. And anytime he had this dream where he, he would see the python, his business, there would be no sales, and everything would not turn out well. So he would approach her, he would confront her, accusing her of coming to him in the dream in the form of Python. And she would deny and say, I'm not the one doing this. And then we say she's the one. As a result of that, he had to avoid quarreling with her. This problem also affected his wife, according to him, in a way that she wasn't expressing the motherly love towards her children. She would buy things for them on request. Whenever they requested for anything, she would do well to purchase that. But she never expressed motherly love or care towards her children. And he also mentioned that his wife had this addiction to drinking alcohol to the extent that he drank almost all the alcohol in the house, that he would buy drink and put in the house in case he had visitors, but she would go there and drink everything and put the empty carton back. She would fold it and put it back. And anytime he had a visitor, he would think that there was probably a drink there. When he goes there, he would see empty bottles. That was how addicted she was to drinking alcohol. And anytime this problem comes up, he would try to cover it up so that people outside or the visitors would not know the problems or the misunderstandings that were taking place in the house. As a result of this problem, they no longer work together as couples. Each time he wants to come close to her, she would yell at him and tell him to keep his distance. Please continue your testimony, sir. Uh, so the thing starts every day, every day, every day, every day. He get the day, he drink one big alcohol. Where the expenses? Ah, I call and I say, ah, I say, honey, you do this one for me, oh. This one you do, eh? <laughs> no, only God do. Oh. I say, this one, no one, <laughs> but, but may poor in not day, I just keep calm. So, but, where we come, synagogue of our nation, because I get sick every day, every day one problem, every day one problem, you may say we go hospital. Where we go hospital? Because of my leg. My leg swell up. I wake up one morning, my head, my leg, they hurt me like fire. Be like I, they, I put my leg for over. Huh? I call, I say, honey, my leg, they hurt me. You say, what should be that now? I say, my leg, they hurt me. If I look, my leg, they swell up. They swell up. They swell up. We, we can't go hospital. Doctor check everything. Check my liver and my kidney and my heart. Whether any problem. Doctor said no problem. Oh, he don't see any problem. So that place we come home. From there we start to move spiritualists. We move places. Some visitors we come. I stopped since eight months ago. I stopped to go in store because of my head. People come meet me, then we say, I ah, go to so place, oh, that place is, if you go there, everything will go. I will start. I first go village, it says six months, come back, no way. I come back, I say, enter worry, now the thing starts. I say, ah, if you say, I'll worry, then do the thing for me, oh. Ah. Now I start. The place we go, some go take 800, some go take one million, 
They say if you don't take the money, everything will go. But at that time, the problem sat more and more. So, where will they go? You get one place we go. Last month, as we reached there, the man said, if we enter, as this place we come is the final place. You mean, say, we get the place we go before. The man give me date. He said, now November, uh, October, November. He said, in the COP Shari. He said, my life in the sea. So, I live, we leave the place. Go this place now. This man said, if we pay 2.5 million, everything will go. And I start to have the inches for my body. Something working in my body bites me like ants. And have sharp objects. I will see sharp objects for my body. Are they, when are they complain? And people see me, then we say, ah, they enjoy you. Are they fat? They are they big? I said, ah, but they don't know say he's dead. So the man was ex emotionally explaining how this problem affected him. That this problem gave him some sort of sickness in the leg. He went to the hospital, went to different places. There was no solution. When he went to the hospital, doctor checked him. According to him, nothing was wrong with him. There was no diagnosis done. So he started going to different spiritualists where they would charge him so much money, as much as 800,000 Naira. There was where he went to, he was charged a million Naira. And there was somewhere else he went to where he was charged 2.5 million Naira, all in search of solution to this problem. This problem affected his leg and caused burning sensation in his leg, which would travel around his body. As a result of this, he could not sleep or eat. He was restless and he was in pain as a result of this problem. This made him travel to so many places in search of solution, but he could not find any solution to this problem in his leg. So when I got the place then collect 2.5 million, the man said, you will throw, you will do a sacrifice with the animal. I will bury me. He dig the ground three feet. I said, I will lie down like who dead. He covered me with the black cloth and the white cloth. And throw some hot drink. So then use uh, sand, cover me. So make a, if I get up, everything will be gone. And especially the one I'm walking my body, my head, my mouth, my teeth. Because if the team bite my teeth, my teeth will shock me. Uh, so the man say, after that, everything will finish. But when the man do everything, we come out. <laughs> now that time, the problem starts more and more. So the man was explaining about the place he went to, where he was charged 2.5 million naira in search of solution to this problem. According to what he said, there he was told to lie down like a dead body. He was covered with a white and black cloth and he was also covered with sand. He was told that when he gets up, that will be the end of the problem because he was feeling moving sensation all over his body. At a point, he felt the moving sensation in his mouth and it affected his teeth that anytime he wants to do anything, talk or chew, you feel a shocking sensation in his teeth. So he felt this moving sensation all over his body. As a result of that, he was desperate, so he went, he was charged that amount, 2.5 million naira, and he did everything that was required of him. When he got up, he said that was where the problem even began. As we go that one, business closed, because me and my wife go. But as I said, I said my wife, I said, ah, go and open store. We're not going to move like this, you know, send our money with the spend. As my wife goes to store, no sales again. Customer, where they come, they stay again, no, they come again. Everything come down. We not stop, we stop, we not stop there. We begin to move because we want solution because of my life. We enter another place. They say they go bath me with water. They will carry me go river, go bath me. Where they bath that one, everything will stop. The one, that man collects 1.5. He said, that one go close. I see. He said, the right place I come now. He said, ah, 
He said, no, no, sir, I didn't go any other place before. But this one, as I come this place, everything done, go. We enter the river. He said, we tie white cloth. We enter the river. He start doing sacrifice, do everything. Bath me finish. Problem start more and more. But on Sunday, my wife just said, ah, he said, honey, well, may we go synagogue. He said, we just, this thing just come off our mind. Since we just they spend money in here, may we get ready. Ah, huh? when we they talk, money don't finish. Nothing again. I said, and now you can't they remember this place. Eh? I said, why you not remember and since we they spend this money? But now you can't remember. Oh yeah, let's go. So the man mentioned that he didn't stop there. He also went to another place in search of solution to this problem where he was charged 1.5 million naira. He was taken to a river and some sacrifice was done. And after that, it was like the problem just started again. And then they've been moving up and down in search of solution. Prior to this, he also mentioned that some of the places he went to, he was told that between October and November, that would be the end of him. So that was when his wife suddenly remembered that there was a place called the Synagogue Church of All Nations. So she told her husband that they had spent so much money and in fact they were running out of funds. As a result of this problem, me and his wife could no longer go to their business. And even at the business place, they were losing sales. The business was crumbling. So when his wife remembered that there was a place named the Synagogue Church of All Nations, she told her husband, and her husband scolded her saying, why didn't you remember this place all this while? Why are you just remembered, remembering the place? And that was when they made the decision to come down to this one. Please continue your testimony, sir. So when we come to the synagogue uh, last Sunday, I think maybe everything, I said, ah, maybe an amigo manifest because all the whole juju when I go. I said, an amigo manifest to uh, all my body. They caught me with razor blade. I said, only that one they put for my boy itself will go make me. <laughs> Everything will happen. But I don't know. It's my wife. God used to look at us. So when evangelists come for the side with them, as he touched me, all my body cool. Everything. Everything calm down once. I just sit down. I say, ah, make a look first. Whether I go here, that thing go bite me like ant. Because if it bites me here, nowhere you know they bite me. But my private bite, everywhere. I'll, sometimes I will say, ha. Ah. But I just sit down. I say, Wait, make a cool down first. Whether the thing go make me. Because the thing that bites me, I know they sleep. I will open eye money tonight, yo. Money tonight, and when should they go to school? I will begin to think, and that's how they cry because nobody there with me. So, but that Sunday, I just sit down, say, make a look whether this thing will bite me. I don't hear anything. I say, okay, the one where they walk, where they walk out everywhere, but everywhere, but I, I say, whether I look, make a cool down first. I don't see anything. I quiet. I don't. I pitch my wife. I say, ah. I say, honey, what did that happen to me? Oh, everything don't cool. He say, eh? I say, ha. I say, but maybe we leave and first tomorrow. We go know. Yeah. So the man explained that they finally came down to the synagogue church of all nations. They were here at the school last Sunday. The evangelist approached him, and when he laid his hands on him, he felt a cooling sensation in his body. And all the moving sensation, the biting sensation, the itching he felt, the uneasy felt, everything in his body became calm. So he was contemplating within himself about the healing he received. 
So he sat and observed himself for a while. And he observed and he noticed that he no longer felt that moving sensation in his body. He told his wife about what he felt. His wife was happy. But then, because he was still doubting, he said, let us wait till the next day to see what happens. Please continue, sir. So, after the we sleep, wake up, he asked me, he said, honey, that thing where they bite you, he bite you. <laughs> I said, no. He said, what of the one where they work out for your body? I said, nobody hear anything, no. So, two, two days, when I give her, I said, ah, I said, honey, this thing don't go fine now. I said, God, don't do it. God of synagogue, God of TV Joshua, God of Emmanuel TV. Huh? I said, God of senior prophet TV Joshua, God of mama, Evelyn, don't do it. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. People of God, let's keep clapping, let's keep clapping, let's keep clapping, let's keep clapping. Wow. Indeed, this can only be the God of prophets, TV Joshua. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ once more. Wow, the man said that after the prayers, he kept observing himself. The next day, he didn't feel that moving sensation, that burning sensation, that itch he felt all over his body. He no longer felt it anymore. Even the day after, he didn't feel that sensation. And his wife asked him, honey, do you still feel this sensation? He said, no, that he was no longer feeling it. And that was when he confirmed that he is healed to the glory of God. He also mentioned that whenever this problem starts, he's unable to sleep or eat. But according to what he just said, he was able to sleep and now he's healed to the glory of God. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ once more. So you've been talking about this leg that has been affected by this problem. Can you show us the leg you're talking about? See the leg. Before I cannot wear this pound, it's only the true slippers that they wear. If it's the first time I carry two crutches, I cannot match the leg on the floor. But now, children of God, see the leg. I can match it now. Can you tell? If it's I can tap the leg. Before I cannot do this. Ha. Huh. But now, how do you feel that God Almighty has located you and healed you to the glory of God? I feel happy. Wow, let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. <laughs> Sir, we can see some pictures on display beside your wife. Can you tell us what those pictures are all about? Children of God, Emmanuel. <laughs> this leg, you get the time, the leg will come down. You get the time, it will fart. You will swallow. If you think that the leg don't go, tomorrow you will see the leg will swell up. Like if you see this place, if you see my fingers, you will see the thing rise up. See this place, it comes down small. See this place, it rise up. See me here. You see me now, you will see this place now, this picture. You will know different things. That time people will think, say, I'll be, ah, see this man. But see me now. Well, let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. For the benefit of the viewers, the man was explaining about the pictures on the board. He was showing us where his leg was swollen. As a result of that, he could not place his leg on the floor. And he was feeling this burning sensation in his leg and all over his body. And this was a problem that the doctor could not diagnose because they told him that nothing is wrong with you. But he alone knows the torment, the torture he was going through. And the pictures were was showing his face, the picture that was showing his face, according to him, he said he was looking big and a bit fat. People thought that he was enjoying life. He was living life not knowing that he was going through a lot. But after the touch of God, according to him, he said there's a huge difference and he's yet to testify to the glory of God, which he just did. We saw him move his leg, tap his leg, and this was something he could not do before. People of God, let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. Like I said, as I talked before about my wife, 
Uh, before, we cannot close, we cannot walk together. But now, if you say, where we the crossroad, I will use, I will use my hand. You will uh, carry out crossroads. Uh, and this was uh, something that has never happened before in your marriage. Yes. And now, how do you feel that the relationship between you and your wife has been restored? Yes. As you said, sometimes we they go for road. I will just throw one word, whether she will angry, yeah? but she will cool. I say, God don't do it for me. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. The man was explaining that after her deliverance, he was trying to test her by slightly provoking her with words. But to his surprise, she will be calm and she will respond calmly. And that was a confirmation to God's wonderful deliverance in her life. So how you feel now? Say, God Almighty, don't restore the relationship between you and your wife. How you feel now? I feel good. I feel all right. Oh. I'm happy. Because what God done. What I'm telling people of the world, come close to God and come see now God of all nations. Come here, God is here. Now here it they happen. The man was explaining that he feels happy and excited about the relationship between he and his wife being restored. So he's giving his word of advice that whenever you're facing any problem, come to God and do well to attend a living church because that's where you'll meet God Almighty, you know, locate you and heal you from your different problems and sicknesses. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ once more. Vous venez d'écouter le merveilleux témoignage de Madame Injuma et son mari. Elle dit qu'elle venait d'une famille adoratrice d'idoles, de, de grand-père au père. Et elle dit que, à un bon moment, plus personne n'était présent pour continuer les sacrifices. Et elle a vu, donc, les mauvais, euh, les mauvais retombées que cette euh, famille adoratrice d'idoles a pu euh, engendrer dans sa vie. Elle dit qu'elle prenait de l'alcool. Elle a commencé à boire de l'alcool en classe de terminale. Et qu'elle avait des, des rêves étranges. Elle était, euh, elle avait des, l'esprit de colère aussi et que euh, plus tard, elle s'est mariée, et, et que son mariage était dans la totale décadence. Elle dit qu'il y avait la division entre euh, ses enfants et elle, dans sa famille en général. Elle dit que quand elle buvait de l'alcool, elle sentait de la joie en elle, elle était heureuse. Et elle dit qu'elle avait aussi de l'addiction à parier, et que elle pariait, elle a même perdu de l'argent jusqu'à 2 millions de Naira. Elle dit donc... Euh, que cet esprit a affecté sa vie grandement et comme vous pouvez le voir, ils sont venus. Elle est venue avec son mari ici à la synagogue de toutes les nations et elle a reçu sa totale délivrance. Son mari à ses côtés euh, euh, témoigne aussi de ce comportement négatif qu'elle avait envers lui, envers sa famille. Et il dit que lui aussi, il a reçu euh, sa délivrance parce que quand il est venu à la synagogue, avant qu'il vienne à la synagogue de toutes les nations, il avait un problème avec sa jambe qui était gonflée et il partait d'hôpitaux en hôpitaux, de spiritualiste en spiritualiste, il n'y avait pas de solution. Il est même parti voir un spiritualiste qui lui a demandé de s'enterrer, qu'il a enterré vivant, et où il a dépensé chez ces spiritualistes plus de 2 millions de naira, mais il n'y avait aucune solution. Donc finalement, ils ont décidé de venir ici à la synagogue de toutes les nations, où ils ont eu leur totale délivrance en tant que couple. Ils rendent gloire à Dieu, ils, ils, disent, ils donnent comme conseil d'accourir au Dieu du prophète Sibi Joshua, ou de, d'atteindre, de partir et de, dans une église vivante. Les spectateurs du monde entier continuent de regarder vos écrans. Espectadores de todo el mundo, acabamos de escuchar el maravilloso testimonio de la señora Uyungwa y de su esposo Steve. Ellos nos cuentan que vinieron a la sinagoga e iglesia de todas las naciones en busca de la sanidad de su esposo, ya que él tenía su pierna hinchada y había ido a muchos lugares en busca de solución, sin embargo no encontraba ninguna, pero cuando vinieron ambos recibieron la liberación de parte de Jesucristo. Ella nos cuenta que venía de una familia adoradora de ídolos y que esos espíritus habían destruido su vida en todos los sentidos, le habían causado enojo, problemas de alcoholismo, por más de 20 años no había ningún tipo de paz en su hogar, le gritaba a sus, a sus hijos, a su esposo incluso el espíritu maligno era el que había causado la enfermedad en la vida de su esposo, ella tenía muchas pesadillas se veía comiendo en los sueños sin embargo cuando el evangelista oró por ella ya fue completamente libre y hoy está aquí para testificar de la liberación y la bondad de Dios, asimismo su esposo también recibió esa sanidad él había ido a brujos, había gastado más de 3 millones de nairas en busca de la sanidad de parte de espiritistas y de brujos, sin embargo fue aquí con el poder del Espíritu Santo de Dios que él recibió ese toque y esa sanidad definitiva, ambos están felices por la restauración, la liberación que Dios les ha dado, su matrimonio ha sido restaurado también, nos aconsejan creer en Dios y confiar en él, espectador permanece conectado
Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that I can walk with. Thank you, Jesus. No more pain. <laughs> I can squat now. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Let us put our hands together for... Yes, thank God Almighty for what he has done in his life. Once again, let us put our hands together for Jesus. Yes, sir, you're welcome in Jesus' name. We, please tell us your name and share with us your wonderful testimony. Good morning, church. Emmanuel. Yeah, my name is um, Moses Edwin and I'm from Anambra State, but living in Ogu State. Well, it all started um, three years ago, 2021, April 7th. I can't forget. I was out, you know, on my daily activities. So that day, I decided to board the public bus going to work. I don't know what happened. The bus failed break. Like, just like as I, I used to watch movies on um, Nolly, uh, Nollywood and, other, and, and all of that. The bus failed break and ran into people, shops, just like that. And I was right there sitting, looking like, ah, ah, what is happening? Am I, I, are we shooting a movie or what? Everything just, everything just came like a flash to me. People rushed the bus, bringing out people that were injured, bringing out people that were, you know, Head injuries, leg injuries, some self were unconscious, but I was just there sitting. Then they brought me out. Are you okay? They were asking me, are you okay? Are you fine? I said, I'm okay. I'm okay, I'm fine. They said, but are you sure? Check yourself. I said, ah, just the knee pain, my, just my knee. I'm having slight pain on my knee. And they said, okay, come. They took me to a place. I sat down. I removed my trousers and they massaged my leg. They said, are you fine? I said, I'm fine. They said, okay, can you go wherever you are going? I said, I can, I can find my way. But my spirit, I just called my mom. I said, ah, mom, it's you. The boss I bought there just had an accident. And she said, where are you? I said, I'm a so, 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 and so. Can you come home? I said, okay, I will try. She said, don't go anywhere. Come home. So I went home and she started asking. I explained everything to her. She said, ha, ah, God really saved you. I was home for some time. Then after some time, I said, I resumed work. I started going to work and all that. Before you know, I started having pain on the knee again. But my mind didn't go there. I said, maybe it's normal knee pain and all that. I went to the pharmacy. I complained. They gave me some drugs to use and all that. 
I started going to work and all that. But the thing was just disturbing me. I said, what kind of... I said, I called my mother. I said, ah, mom, see you. She said, ah, it should be as a result of the accident you had years ago. I said, ah, don't think now. It's been long. I can now... Maybe it's stress. Let me rest. So I took some days off, went home, rested. I felt I was okay. I resumed again. It came, but this time it, it was even worse. So I talked to a friend. He said, ah, go and see an uh, orthopedic surgeon. I said, I don't have money, but I will try. I went, I went, I spent money. I did some x-ray. They said I had dislocation. My ligament is this. My, I said, that will not concern me. Shall I look for something that I will use to be fine? Then they gave me a knee brace to use and some medications. So I went to, I told my mom. My mom said, ah, why are you spending money like that? I didn't know it was so Why did you tell me this pain is severe like that? Okay, you know what? Find time and come to church. Come to, uh, uh, to the synagogue. I said, oh, mommy, see, like this now, the kind, of work, the kind of work I have on ground will not let me come to church. Besides, but in my mind, I know why I was saying no. I don't want to come to church and carry placard and say, ah, woman of God, help me. I cannot imagine myself doing that. I said, no, mommy, don't worry. I will find. I've, they've given me a knee brace to use. So she said, okay. The pain became severe. This year, it was worse than before. It traveled, the pain traveled from my knee to my waist. I cannot bend. I cannot walk. Nothing. I'm someone that, I'm into pastries. I'm someone that can stand 9, 10, 11 hours straight up. But now, I can, I, as in then, I could not stand for two hours, barely two hours. The staff, the management, they were asking me, are you okay? What up? I say is my knee. It's my knee. They were thinking I was using my knee as an excuse not to work or deliver some jobs. Even some clients will, will contact me, are you available? I'll say, no, I'm not available. I will give the job to someone else because I cannot imagine going through that stress. I told my mom. My mom said, come home. I went home. Then she asked me in her dialect, I got synagogue this Sunday. You see, mommy, I'm not going. Meaning, she asked me if I would go to synagogue this Sunday. I said, mommy, I'm not going. But in my mind, I know why I'm saying no. She tried to encourage me. I said no. I went back again to work. I continued. But this time, it was worse. I decided to visit a different orthopedic surgeon. The same thing that the first one told me, the same thing this person told me. And they gave me another knee brace again. But this, but this time it was adjustable so that I can able to adjust it to the, to the way I want. I took the knee brace, took the medication, I went to, I told my mom. My mom said that talking to me and said, this thing you are doing, you are wasting your time. Look for time, great chance, come to Lagos and come to the church. I said, okay. So I look, I, sometimes last week I came to Lagos, I went to, and she said, she asked me again in my, in my dialect, yeah, I got seen God this Sunday. Meaning, will you go to church this Sunday? I said, I will try. Okay, did you come with the medical report and everything so that I can re, um, go for the prayer line? I said, mommy, that one, I know I'm not interested. I don't want to go for prayer line. Don't worry. During the laying of us, I will just talk to the evangelist. I don't want to be on the screen at all. Let me just talk to the evangelist and they, he will lay hand on me and I'll be fine. I believe I'll be fine. She tried to encourage me to register for the emergency. I said, don't worry, mommy, don't worry. She said, okay. So last week Sunday, I came. She chatted me. Are you in the church? I said, yes. Did you register for prayer? I said, no, but I'm in the congregation. She said, okay. So during the, um, the time for laying hands, the evangelist came. I brought out my phone. I showed him some X-ray scan. Showed him some picture. And I never knew. Right from when I was talking to him, I was on the screen. Something I was avoiding. <laughs> People of God, I never knew. And I was avoiding that. I don't want to be on the screen. Let me just talk to this evangelist and he will pray for me and I'll be fine. But right from when I was talking to him, see, the very time, the next, because I just saw myself when I opened my eyes. He prayed for me. He was praying for me. It was as if I was going through spiritual surgery because I, I could feel my bone cracking. <laughs> what I am saying might look like storytelling, but this is real reality because I never knew. To, I used to hear people testimony how God healed them, but I never knew it would happen to me that same way. I could I could hear my bone. I could feel my body shivering. My waist was not was becoming like 
so heavy. I had to sit down. But I didn't know what was happening. After some time, he tapped me and said, I should walk with him. I started walking with him. I, I was not feeling anything. I started walking with him. Then he said, you are free. That is how I got my healing. Once again, let us put our hands together for the mighty Jesus. The miracle walking God. Yes, sir. So once again, for the benefit of your listeners, can you explain to us what happened while the evangelist was praying for you and the changes that you have noticed after your healing? Okay, when the evangelist was praying for me, I was feeling like some people, so one was standing by my right, one was standing by my left. I was feeling like they took my leg and started doing some, you know, some massage on it and all that. I didn't, I could not, I cannot even explain what was happening. But I knew something was going on with me. And I was on the screen. So when everything happened, when he tapped me, when I got myself, he said I should walk with him. I started walking. I started from like, you know, when a baby is trying to, is learning how to walk. I started walking with him and all that. Then he said you are free. He made me said you are free. I was feeling pain and the pain stopped instantly. That was how I got the healing instantly. So tell us, what are the changes you've noticed and can you demonstrate the things that you can do now after the prayer that you couldn't do before? Okay, the changes I have... <laughs> now, even the way I'm standing before, I cannot start without bend, standing like this or standing like this because even like, I can remember last Sunday, I was sitting all through. The usher was coming to me and telling me, can you stand up? So I can you stand up? In my mind, I'd be like, bless they send you come. But I did not fight the usher, but I knew what was going on with me. So now, I can stand. In fact, I can't wait to go back to work like this. I can't wait to go back to work. I, I can squat now. Before, I can't do this without feeling pain. I can squat. I can bend. I can jump. I can do everything now. I'm free. I can exercise myself any hour I want. And like when I sleep at night, before I can't, I cannot stand up easily to use the bathroom. But now, even self, I've forgotten that I ever had knee problem. I can stand up easily, go to the bedroom, use myself, and you know, go back to bed peacefully without any pain or discomfort. Once again, let us put our hands together for Jesus Christ. So, sir, we thank God Almighty for what he has done in your life. So, for the benefit of your listeners, what is your word of encouragement to them? People of God, it is a good thing if you are surrounded by people who believe in God. Always listen. If I had listened to my mother before now, I won't the pain to the extent I was having, it won't be to that, it won't go to that extent. I listen to, I thank God I listen. So try to listen. If you have people who talk to you about Christ, listen to them. And whenever you are in problem, do not run away from God. Instead, run to God. He will surely save you. Chamos el increíble testimonio de Moses. Él vino aquí a la sinagoga iglesia de todas las naciones con un dolor muy severo en su rodilla. Él nos comenta que por muchos años estuvo con este dolor. Fue a diferentes hospitales, le dieron medicamentos, inclusive un soporte para la rodilla, pero nada le trajo solución hasta que llegó aquí a la sinagoga iglesia de todas las naciones. Como vemos, el evangelista oró por él y recibió su sanidad. En el momento nos dice que fue como una operación espiritual porque él sintió como que su rodilla hacía un ruido y en el momento en el que el evangelista oró por él, Comenzó a caminar, comenzó a ejercitarse y ya no sentía ningún dolor. Ahora se siente completamente libre, está completamente sano y da gloria a Jesucristo por este maravilloso milagro. Vous venez écouter le merveilleux témoignage de Monsieur Moses qui dit qu'un jour, il y a trois ans, il était dans un bus et il a eu un accident. Il dit que depuis ce jour, il a une douleur au genou qu'il a négligé. Il est parti voir des docteurs plus tard qui lui a dit que c'était une dislocation de genou. Donc il a porté euh, une, un, un, une assistance au niveau du genou. Et il ne pouvait pas marcher euh, confortablement. Il a, il a porté une genouillère, en, en effet. Il ne pouvait pas marcher confortablement. Il dit qu'il ne pouvait pas tenir deux heures debout et qu'il sentait des, euh, des, des mouvements dans son pied. Ça, il était inconfortable. Il dit qu'il a eu sa mère, lui a conseillé de venir ici à la synagogue de des Nations. Et comme vous pouvez le voir, un des évangélistes a prié pour lui. 
Il dit que l'évangéliste, lorsqu'il priait pour lui, euh, a, a touché son pied et il a senti des craquelements de ses os. Et dès que l'évangéliste lui a dit de marcher, a marché avec lui, et dès que l'évangéliste lui a dit qu'il était libre, il était complètement libre, il a senti que la douleur s'est arrêtée immédiatement. Il dit que depuis ce jour, il marche librement, il est libre, il rend gloire à Dieu pour sa guérison. Let us put our... And that was how she received it. The person beside you and tell us what God has done for you. People of God, Emmanuel. Emmanuel. My name is Vivian Tinyere Okongo. And the woman beside me is my mom. Hmm. I came last um, Sunday for my deliverance, and um, I'm so happy, extremely happy, that God delivered me. It all started when, um, before I was born, according to how my mom told me, because I started making inquiries as my journey was going. So my mom told me that um, before I was born, robbers came and robbed them when they gave birth to our elders, um daughter and um, my, my dad, in order for that not to occur again, he then brought in a charm for protection, not knowing that um, there is more behind the charm. So being that they don't reside in the village then, we reside in Benin, so they buried the charm there and went to Benin. Then the compound dwellers there in the village, they were all complaining that every night they keep hearing footsteps around the compound and um, something crying for something. So when my dad got to hear about it, he called the person that introduced him to the charm. I was like, ah, what's going on? See what my compound people are talking about. So the person told him that um, there's some, there, you are supposed to be striking a mash stick. When, the, when you hear the thing crying and asking for something, all you just have to do is get a mash stick and strike it and throw for the thing. So this thing kept on disturbing until they gave birth to all of us. And we're battling with, growing up, we're battling with attacks, nightmares, serious nightmare. So my dad still seeking for protection. He now um, started taking us to different prophetess, churches, and spiritualists, traditionalists, and they were introducing us to baiting us in the river and all that. It kept on going and going. It was as if the more he was, you know, going out there seeking for solution, 
the more he's packing the whole problems. So now, this, um, after bathing in the river, we got to find out that each time we go out to pee at night, ha, we will see skeleton, as in skeleton, they, 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 we both step walking towards us. Ha, we start shouting for help. Our, our dad will run out and be like, ah, daddy, we just saw skeleton and all that. So he kept on and on. He will call this one, ah, my children have seen skeleton. This thing is not working, no. We'll do another one, like that. Before you know it, he went to the village and brought a traditionalist that came and gave us incisions in our body. A spiritualist that came and gave us incisions in our body. Ha. It kept on going and going and going. It was affecting everybody. So we're just living like that. These things affected all of us, the whole children. No marriage, delay, disappointment, as in no employment, zero. Everything was just as if... We will just sit down. Our beings are making it. We will be like, what's going on? Not even one person, like seven of us. At least one or two is doing well now. But this one, from one to the last, nobody. What's going on? So, this thing kept going on. See, I got married. I was like, ah, I don't change family name now. My life go better. But we, my life no better. It became worse. Okay, oh, we kept on going. This thing kept attacking my our finance, oh God, everything just went down to zero. The more we are striving, the more it's going down to zero. We've done lots and lots and lots of businesses. Nothing, everything going down to zero. Ah, me, the thing can't tire me. Oh. I, I got to call my mom. Mommy, I need to come and talk to you because this thing is getting too much. So when I came to my mom, she told me that the only solution, that was when she narrated this whole, how the genesis happened. The only solution is to come to church. Me, I said, I cannot come to church, oh, because I don't really believe in, you know, all these things anymore. I've been to places, nothing is working. I've done so many deliverance, nothing is working. I can't come to church. So I kept living like that with the mentality of I cannot come to school one. I gave birth to one of my baby through CS. After two days after CS, I went into coma. In that coma, they were chasing me. Ha. Okay? It's not that you even got married. You gave birth and you gave birth to a boy who sent you. So after much prayer, my mom came and prayed and prayed and prayed, sprinkled uh, water on me then, anointed water. Then she resuscitated. I, 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 I woke up. I kept living like that though, with the mentality of not coming to church. So my last baby, the same thing. He was a preterm. I gave it to him premature. Then after the CS, because we're still CS again. After CS, after two days, I went to coma again. They were dragging me, wanting to kill me. This is my mother came again with prayer, and I woke up. When I got discharged, I got home that night. It was as if I, saw, I was hearing voices in this my right ear. Two male and a female was telling me that you are very lucky that you woke up. But our eyes are still on you. We will, we will make sure that we get to you. And that was how this hyena came up. So, because then I just came back from um, hospital after the surgery I had for my baby. So, the, they gave me hyena for it not to close. So, that I will go back to another operation again. And I said, no, me, I'm not going back again. No. I went to different doctors. I was begging them, is there nothing to do? All of them kept on saying, the only solution is surgery. Me, I know what I'm running up, away from. So even the last doctor I met, he was like, my dear, there's nothing you need to. You just, when you just sleep, just small thing on that. Will just, I said, doctor, you don't understand. That small thing on that is what I'm running away from. So... I looked and looked and looked. And that was why I said, ah, this thing is getting too much. 
business, zero. My life, everything affecting me, attack, nightmares, hasn't even, I'm a script writer, a very good script writer, but mm, nobody's buying my script. Nothing, zero. So I just have to call my mom and say, mommy, when I say that church where they talk, it's time for me to go, because this kind of thing, I don't understand. It's been years. When I mean years, it's been years. And they didn't even end there. They, I kept hearing voices in my ear. They tormented me. They tormented me. Voices telling me, even to watch television, I want to watch television like this. What I will hear is, stupid idiot, fat fool, you want to watch television. You cannot go and do this one, you cannot go and do that one. They kept saying many, many things. If I want to, even when I'm not in the mood to study my Bible, they say, go and study your Bible, go and do this one. They kept using different means to torment my life. So the voices were so much, it affected me both in the market. I would just stand still like this. I was like, they would tell me, buy this one first, do this one first. I see many, many things. Ah, it was frustrating. I said, no, I almost went mad. Even my hair. Right now, I'm even on low court. They were the one that told me, go on low court. Do like this. Do like that. I don't, as in everything that I, I don't, I, I don't want to do. They kept telling me to do it. And me now, being that I'm scared, I said, okay, let me be doing all these things. But when it was down much, I came to visit my mom in Benin. I said, Mommy Biko, I need to come to church. Yo. I want to go to prayer line. My mom said, eh? She, she, as in, she asked me again, what did you say? Repeat what you said. I said, Mommy, I said, I want to go for prayer. Where? I said, synagogue. I said, okay, no problem. That was how I, I came alone to church. And that was how I got my deliverance. And I'm so happy. We thank God for your wonderful deliverance. But tell us, specifically when you came down to Squan last Sunday, what happened when Pastor Evelyn Joshua prayed for you? Hmm. Immediately she touched me. It was as if slap from nowhere, different slaps, pa, 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 everywhere. My face, my body, they were slapping me. I was like, ah, where are all these hands coming from? So I didn't even know what, I was just shaking. What, even when she was even coming, when she was coming, I was shaking. I was so pressed. I was like, ah, let me go and pee. If I go and pee now, I don't know. And I know that my mom is watching. She will, ah, one might you tell me, go and pee, go and urinate. Oh, my body was hot. So immediately she just touched me. Oh, more. Pa, 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 pa. Everywhere, my head, my face, my back, everywhere they were just slapping me. So that was what happened when she touched me. And after that, she, uh, she kept on laying her hands on me. Then I immediately fell on the floor. It was as if a cold sensation from my head here just came down. And I got myself. Let us put our hands together for the Savior Jesus. <laughs> and that was how you received your divine deliverance. Yes. So tell us, after that deliverance, how has it been? Hmm. After the deliverance, eh? hey God, like I'm so happy that I came here, truly. Because I don't, I don't hear those voices again. Before, before, on a normal day, if, I, if my mom, maybe I went to visit my mom in Benin, because I stay in Port Harcourt. If my mom is just watching, because every day, morning, afternoon, night, midnight, midday, midbreak, Money TV in our house. We don't watch any other thing. Is the money TV? So I get irritated. Ah, every time this thing, every time you are watching. This. So I don't. But since after my deliverance, me in my hotel, that channel is what I'm watching. All the preaching, all the songs, everything. Even to midnight, uh, the channel used to show prayer. I will be awake. I will be praying with money TV. And ever since then, everything. Even my before, I don't. I cannot lie down. If I lie on my belly before, and if I wake up, it's, it look as if here yeah, is very heavy. But now, because of behind here, I, I can now press my tummy. Everything is going. Everything is fine now. What about the nightmares? The nightmares all gone. I I, I sleep like a baby. As in, it's as if I now have good relationship with God because right now what I'm experiencing is like. Time to come on, come on. a cool voice, instead of that harsh voice telling me, Go and study your Bible, fat fool. I'll just wake up. What I'll hear is study your Bible. And when I'm studying it, I feel so happy. Understanding comes. Before, if I'm studying the Bible's help, I'm just angry. 
I can't even understand it. I'll keep on reading and I can't understand it. I'll keep, I will even be insulting myself. But right now I'm enjoying it. I'm understanding it. It's as if I'm discussing, ah, God is so, he's so beautiful. He's so beautiful. I'm enjoying my deliverance now. Let us put our hands wonderfully for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So with this beautiful thing God has done in your life, what is your advice to viewers who are watching you right now? Please, everybody that is watching, that is listening to me, because if you have an opportunity to come to a living church, please do. And parents, don't give up on your child. Don't. My mother did not give up on me. <laughs> My mother did not give up on me. She kept on calling. She kept on praying. Each time I call her, she's always there to say something. Each time I, she never for one day scold at me. She never, even when I yell at her and say, Mommy, please stop all these things. Ah, I said, I'm fine. I'm doing, she just keep calm. So please don't give up on your child. And you, that's a child, when your parents are talking to you, please listen. Because like my mother always says, I can never deceive you. So your parents can never deceive you. Thank you. So let us listen to your mother. You're welcome. Please introduce yourself, Ma, and tell us what you can say concerning the deliverance your daughter has received. Children of God, Emmanuel. Good morning, Charles. My name is Mrs. Roslyn Ibayaka. I'm from Imo State. But we are residing in Benin. The, the person right here by my side is my daughter. <laughs> I am here to return all the glory to God of this great commission. I return all the glory to God of Prophet T.B. Joshua. Blessed memory. I return all the glory to God of Pastor Evelyn Joshua, our mama, may your days be long. I'm so happy to be here in your midst. I thank God for what God has done in my life and in my family. The life of my daughter. I thank God. I'm here to confirm I hear to confirm all his, she said to be true. I thank God. When she was passing through all this, I was calling. I was talking to her. I was there praying for her. Continue praying for her. Advising her. But she didn't listen. She refused to listen. But now, after her deliverance? But now, when she called me, that was last two weeks, mommy, the thing is getting tough, tougher and tougher. I say, my dear, come down to Benin. Come down to Benin. There is somewhere you will get your solution. She said, I am coming. And she came. I devised her, I prepared for her, and she came last week. I was so happy when I saw her being delivered. She is totally free. Totally free. So, Ma, with this wonderful deliverance that has happened in your family, what is your advice to people who are listening to you right now? My advice goes first to the mothers. No matter what happened, no matter what is the children are passing through, do not abandon them. Always pray for them. It is not ordinary. Children, Always listen to your parents. 
they will never, never deceive you. Because they are your parents. They are your second God. After God Almighty. I thank God. She cannot sleep. Before now, she couldn't sleep. Midnight, she will call me. Morning, she's calling up. She was calling on me. But today, when I met her in her uh, hotel, she was so okay. She is okay. She can watch TV now. She can watch Imane TV now. She's not finding any fault on Imane TV. I give God all the glory. God of Prophet TV, Joshua. May I not be highly exalted. May I not be highly glorified. Receive one and all glory. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Nous venons d'écouter le témoignage de Madame Viviane. Elle nous révèle qu'elle est dans une famille à droite d'idoles après que les voleurs aient volé sa famille et que son père ait reçu une idole pour protection. Malheureusement, cette idole a mis la famille dans une situation infernale, marquée par le revers, la pauvreté et la stagnation. Croyant qu'elle serait confortable suite à son mariage, la situation est empirée où elle a accouché ses deux enfants par césarienne. Dépassée par la situation, elle s'est pliée finalement contre sa mère est venue sur la squane où elle a reçu sa délivrance par la prière de la pasteur Evelyne Dochois. Maintenant, elle nous dit qu'elle est maintenant libre. Elle n'entend plus des voix lui imposant les choses à faire. Elle n'a plus de cauchemar et son année a complètement disparu. Maintenant, elle dort très bien. Et pour conseil, elle nous dit de courir à Dieu dans une église vivante et aux parents de ne jamais abandonner leurs enfants et aux enfants d'être attentifs et obéissants à leurs parents. Lorsque sa maman a pris la parole, elle a confirmé ce que sa fille a dit et a donné les mêmes conseils. Restons connectés. Escuchamos el maravilloso testimonio de Vivian. Ella nos comenta que vino aquí a la sinagoga iglesia de todas las naciones con un problema de hernia umbilical. Ella también nos dice que tenía muchas pesadillas y tenía ataques espirituales ya que desde una temprana edad ella realizó diferentes rituales ya que viene de una familia adoradora de ídolos. Y esto le trajo pobreza, estancamiento y muchos ataques espirituales, pesadillas. Ella tenía problemas en su matrimonio, en su familia. Y al venir aquí a la Arena de la Libertad, como vemos en pantalla, la mujer de Dios, la pastora Evelyn, yo lloró por ella y recibió su liberación y sanidad en el nombre de Jesús. Nos comenta ahora de que ya no tiene pesadillas ni ataques espirituales y además puede tocar su estómago y no tiene más dolor. Confirma su sanidad y su liberación para la gloria de Dios. una a una las personas caminar libres la pastora Belén Joshua administra sanidad en la vida de esta mujer con un problema de dificultad para respirar y ella cae bajo la influencia y el poder del Espíritu Santo Shall we put our hands together for Jesus? And that was how she received her healing to the glory of God. And she's right here in our midst to return all glory to God Almighty for his goodness in her life. Ma, you're welcome. Please introduce yourself and tell us about the goodness of God in your life. 
Good morning and win today. My name is William Zesta, and I'm here to testify to the goodness of the Most High from delivering me from um, asthma. I received my healing on Sunday. It all started way back while I was in junior secondary school, so that was um, 14 years back ago. While we were playing, I collapsed in the school, and I was rushed to the school nurse where I was treated, and I was taken to the school hospital, and they said I had pneumonia. So I was being treated, and I went back home, and after a month plus, I had the same issue raised up, and my parents took me to the family hospital where I was diagnosed with asthma, and after a series of tests, I was given um, inhaler to use, and I was on medication. So it became something of back-to-back. Every, at some point, I spent most of my teenage in the hospital. I would be discharged today. I'm back at the hospital the next day because at some point, it would just come unannounced, unaware. I can't stay in a crowded environment. I can't stay where the room temperature is too hot. It tends to... Um, released the attack and affected my social life because I was being stigmatized with the asthma kid in school. So why we try to play, don't, try, don't play with that, she's the asthma kid, me no go go. And at some point, I wasn't proud of coming to school. I would tell my mom, I don't want to go to school today. I call him, my principal, and tell her that I'm not feeling too well. But my mom would tell me, let's start go to school, don't be shy. So I had to live with that um, trauma of being called an asthma kid in my secondary school and primary school. And um, I could not partake in social activities. I, I stopped. I had to drop out from the marathon race because I normally run. But finding out I was asthmatic, I had to um, stop running. I had to um, stop any exercise that's going to trigger the asthma attack. While it affected me also in institutions, sometimes I would be rushed home from um, my school down to Lagos. My friends would call my parents and tell, her, tell them that, She's back at it again, and my family would call and tell me, I hope I can, because doctor said something that if I'm not with the inhaler or I'm not with my drugs, I should um, sit in a, I should sit calm, then try to blow air in and out so I can um, get back myself. And it affected my work life. I once worked with the media, but due to having asthma, I was, um, I had to stop because we are always on the field 247 and I can't stay in an odd environment. So why interviewing, I might have the asthma attack and would have to go back to the office. So I had to stop anything that would um, cause me stress. And I could remember at some point in time, my siblings would call me to um, encourage me not to um, give up on my goals just because I was diagnosed with asthma. And yeah, it really affected me in a negative way. I had to um, have just little um, second. At some point, I became so rebellious because when you use it to yab me, I would yab you back. That I pray God to give you the same asthma that I'm going through. You can feel the pain. It came with chest pain. And sometimes I can't breathe. I would have to um, hold my knee to assist myself in breathing. I can't walk far. I, I, once I do that, I start panting. So um, after the prayer on Sunday, I was opportune to be at the prayer line on Sunday. And... Um, mommy, Pastor Mrs. Evan Joshua, prayed for me. She gave me the anointing water, and I felt this chill in my body. I felt this um, tightness on my chest being removed, and immediately I could breathe freely. Most times, I use sleeping aid just to sleep. I would have to. My parents would have to use pillow to raise my head up because I can't breathe. I can't sleep, and it became a part of me that without the sleeping pills, I can't do anything. Without the inelai, I can't move, but to God be the glory, I received my total healing on Sunday, and I'm saying thank you, Jesus. Shall we put our hands together for Jesus? Let's put our hands together for Jesus. So, can you tell us the changes you have noticed in your body after receiving your healing last week? Yes, I slept for the first time without using inela or sleeping aids. And um, during the week, most times my parents would not allow me to enter the kitchen because, trust me, once it's 5 p.m., I can't enter the kitchen because of suffocation. But on Wednesday, my sister was like, go and cook. I said, trust me, I'm going to cook. And yes, I went. I closed the window. I closed the um, kitchen door. On the norms, I need to open the space for ventilation. And I can't fry with oil. If I'm to cook, I'm going to boil the oil. But I choose to fry the oil, and there was no reaction. Put our hands together for Jesus. 
You also mentioned that you had difficulty in breathing. Can you breathe in and out for us? So do you have any difficulty while doing that? No, I can't try that because that is suicide mission. It's like me trying to tell myself I want to die. When I try to hold my breath, I can't hold my breath for a second. I would gasp for it. But now I can breathe in, I can breathe out, no pain. Shall we put our hands together for Jesus? So with this wonderful work of God in your life, what is your word of encouragement to people listening to you right now? Um, trust in God always because he is the only one that can save you. Doctor said, I cannot be delivered from this ailment. that I will only have to manage it. But God proved himself mightily in my life. I said, may his name alone be glorified in Jesus' name. Desde todo el mundo acabamos de escuchar el maravilloso testimonio de la joven Esther. Ella nos cuenta que vino a la sinagoga iglesia de todas las naciones en busca de su sanidad porque tenía un problema de asma. Nos cuenta que este problema le afectaba demasiado, no podía caminar eh, mucho, se fatigaba fácilmente, tenía dolor en su pecho, eh, no podía cocinar, no podía hacer muchas actividades. Además tenía que usar el inhalador que vimos en pantalla. Sin embargo, cuando ella recibió oración inmediatamente, recibió su sanidad y está aquí para testificar de la liberación, de la sanidad de Dios Todopoderoso, ahora puede respirar libremente, ya no tiene dolor en su pecho, ahora puede hacer todo lo que antes no podía hacer y le da toda la gloria a Dios por lo que Él ha hecho en su vida, nos aconseja creer en Dios, espectador permanece conectado Su testimonio nos viene de Mademoiselle Esther, ella nos revela que desde los 14 años que ella ha sido diagnosticada de asma, entonces su asma ha causado en ella el hecho de que ella no podía pas continuar sus estudios et qu'elle ne pouvait pas participer également à des activités sociales comme le marathon en groupe. Cela a également occasionné la récession et la stagnation dans ses entreprises, dans tout ce qu'elle faisait. Elle nous dit qu'elle ne pouvait pas rester également dans un endroit clos. Mais lorsqu'elle est venue sur la scène, elle a reçu sa délivrance et sa guérison. Elle dit que maintenant, elle dort très bien et elle arrive maintenant à préparer à la cuisine ce qu'elle ne pouvait pas faire. Et comme conseil, nous devons avoir fort en Dieu car rien ne lui est impossible. Restons connectés pour la suite des témoignages.